Hey guys, how's it going? Just testing out some things, just thought I'd show you some different stuff that I can do, uh, some plans in the future. I got this manga Bible. I don't know I've shown it in the past a little bit, but so I got it from the Goodwill for $1.99. I'm going to try to take that off there. You guys got to hate when you get stickers on stuff. It doesn't really matter. This isn't really a Bible I'm going to use, but stickers are just annoying. Now it's just going to leave gunk on there. Doesn't want to come off easily. Knows how long it's been on there. Oh well. Tearing the cover apart now. Dig it into it. Not my manga Bible. Well, I just want to show with the two cameras and some different things I got going on here. And I'm using a black backdrop behind me. I've got a green screen too that I haven't even experimented with yet, really, but that's, you know, something that's going to be happening this year. I'd like to try. What version is this? Manga Bible. It's the New Living Translation. Okay. But it's just got some pictures in the middle. It's got a little comic section. I guess that's uh, Jesus being born in the manger. And it's got like the Asian anime style theme. And there's Jesus as an adult. You must carry out what God desires. But, or is that John the Baptist, maybe? Let's see here. John baptized Yeshua. Oh, he calls him Yeshua. So, uh, interesting. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. So this is kind of cool. I mean, yeah, it's not a King James Bible, obviously, but... So it doesn't substitute for that. Yeshua took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them, then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and the disciples picked up twelve baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. You know, I spent a lot of this morning, it's like 8 a.m., and I've probably been up since like 4 a.m., so I just I don't have a sleep schedule. I stay up late, I wake up early, you know, I take a couple hour nap, stay up for a while, take another hour nap or something. But I've been up for a while just completely organizing a lot of things in the room, and I've got like a tote full of just cables and stuff for computers, and you know, different plugins and all kinds of stuff that I've just gathered up over the years. And, you know, a lot of it's kind of junk, but, you know, some of it can be used. I put them all into bags, like separate Ziploc bags and stuff. I tried to organize them because when you have a tub just filled with cords, you know, uh, that aren't tied up or anything, it's just a mess going through it. So putting them in the bags is not a bad idea. I've just been cleaning and... Uh, my little netbook that I said had a lot of problems. Well, since I got two new computers and I just reinstalled Windows on both of them and everything, um, I've been charging the net one of my netbooks, and I mean I've actually got two of them. But one of them that I used, you know, since the beginning, it had problems and stuff, and I decided why don't I just try to just wipe it out and just restart it and reinstall Windows and everything. So I did that, and it's it's awesome. It seems like it's pretty good now. So I mean, it's still not a substitute for like a desktop, so it's a lot better that I've got these desktops. Um, so I'm loving this, being able to use these two cameras like this. Then a despised Samaritan came along. A good Samaritan. When he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him into an inn where he took care of him. So I'm somebody who thinks, you know, you really got to be organized. For me, I got to be organized. Not everybody does. People can, there's some people that can work, you know, in a mess and stuff. But I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row and everything on the website, you know, in my apartment. And just, you know, I had to dust off my bookshelf. It, you know, I think it's been dusty since they did the floor in the kitchen like last summer. And, you know, if I didn't clean it by then, at least it, it gathered more dust anyway. So it was just, 
really dusty. I mean, it still needs clean better, but just stuff like that. You know, if I want to start recording in front of the bookshelf more and I want to start looking at the books more and everything, I, I want it to be clean and organized. There's just so much stuff. But I've made a lot of progress so far. I'm going to keep going at it, and I'm just taking a break now just to kind of enjoy this. And uh, it'll probably take like an hour just to upload this video. Ridiculous. There's no real purpose for this video, but just to show off some things that I can do in the future. I'm excited about... Um, each of you drank the blood from this cup, for this is my blood, which confers the new covenant. So this is, uh, that was the last supper, and that goes to crucifixion. So basically, this covers the, when Jesus was resurrected. It's basically, they got the story of Jesus in the anime comic, I guess it ends there. It doesn't go into, like, Paul or anything, but... Yeah, it's pretty much the gospel. So that's interesting. Just going through that. I wonder what that means. The truth made clear. It's something I picked up at Goodwill. I got a light like right on top of this, so it's gonna have that shine. So that's all stuff that I need to work on. Test out. And I got this chick track here that I showed before. I can just so easily show things like this now, it's cool. It's just it's kind of like a gimmick or a novelty, I guess, but I mean, it can be helpful if I'm going over books, I can show, you know, the good or the bad right from the book. I've got a lot of charts that I've printed out that I've showed over the years, and I'd like to go through these again. You know, there's a lot of these that, uh, man, it's just hard with that light straight on there, especially with the gloss on these. But anyway, and I can zoom in and zoom out. I'm kind of zoomed in. It doesn't. Anyway, this is a chart of the Feast of Leviticus. Now I've got this uh, laminated. But I have some on, you know, futurism and stuff. I'd like to go over those, you know, because starting out, I thought, you know, all these charts are going to be helpful. But. Obviously, there's stuff that I don't agree with now. The Antichrist, the Man of Sin, the Beast of Revelation, chapter 13 and 17. B Middletown Bible Church has a lot of charts like this. You know, some of these are really good charts. Uh, Armageddon Prophecies. That's more futurist stuff. God's history, past and future of the nation, nation of Israel. That would be, you know, dispensationalism stuff. Harmony of Prophecy, again, Dispensationalism. The Covenants. Okay. Which, you know, I want to look at this more. This is obviously, you know, I'm more of a Covenant theologian, I guess. I'm not a theologian, I guess. I believe in Covenant theology, whatever. But that would be something good to look at. God's Kingdom on Earth. Interesting. More dispensationalism. Now this is a really good chart. Stuff like this. This is just a list of the parables. All the parables of Jesus. And it's interesting that there's only like a couple in John that it lists. But you can see how, you know, you got the... You can contrast the parables and the different Gospels. Now this is a great tool. That's awesome. Prophets of the Old Testament, you know, stuff like this is great, you know. It's got to be pretty biblical, bibli bibli biblically accurate, let's say. Daniel 70 weeks, dispensationalism. Creation, it's interesting. Kind of a family tree, basically. The career of the devil. This has to do with dispensationalism, but this is a pretty interesting one. says he was judged at the cross, defeated at the cross. You know, it's all the act, it's kind of like recorded the activity of Satan through the Bible. General survey of prophetic events, be more dispensationalism. The gospel and the Bible. Now that's, that's a good one. Finding the gospel in the Old Testament and stuff. 
dispensations straight up. What is this? The different kings? Yeah, these are the kings, the nations that they ruled, I guess. And I mean, that's a really good chart, you know, as long as it's accurate. All the miracles of Jesus in the Gospels. Absolutely phenomenal chart. Great thing to have. Uh, more creation, timeline. That's interesting. Revelation. Um, this is kind of just a breakdown of the book of Revelation, it looks like. Kind of helpful. Daniel. Probably, I mean, maybe some dispensationalism there, but Christian meaning of the Jewish feasts. Yeah, that, I have to figure out some different lighting if I'm going to do this. But because I put the black backdrop behind me, it kind of takes out the light from above, which was helpful. I've got some different lights, a lot of different lights that I can mess with. So this is just a hard, regular light bulb. That's why it's doing that. I've got a fluorescent light that probably worked better. I don't even know how the sound is getting recorded, if it's being recorded good or not. But the stuff I want to go over with, whether in video or not, that I just need to go over with again for part of the studies. There's just so much stuff, but I think that once I get on a roll, I can go through it, you know. Here's my Bible. Now, I went through the whole Bible and highlighted all of the commentary. So anytime it's yellow, it's somebody who's talking. I think that stuff, the highlighter kind of fades over time, but I mean it still stands up enough. And all of the blue in the New Testament here is commandments, like be of the same mind, recompense to no man evil, think soberly. These are all things that like it's telling you to do. Be not conformed to this world. So it's um, the pink is prayer, rejoicing in hope, patient tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Um, I, I, I under, underline different phrases and stuff that, you know, I wanted to understand or whatever. Places are in the orange. And then I've got names highlighted too. Looks like. Speak the same thing. Be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So this is cool if I do like a Bible run through or just anything. Just going through the scriptures. Just, you know, I can do commentary. I can have the Bible right here. My Bible. You can see what I'm reading. You can see my chewed up fingers, fingernails, <laughs> flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. I'm looking at the yellow here, I mean... The yellow in um, the epistles I might have done differently because that's not really, you know, the whole thing is like commentary or whatever, like Paul's writing and talking the whole time. But I think I got the questions, obviously. It looks like all these are questions, rhetorical questions or whatever that Paul asks. So, I mean, I... I put notes in this Bible, you know, there's like notes and stuff that I put in here that I don't even agree with anymore. But, you know, it's still all helpful. But I love this Bible. I want to keep this as long as I can. This is the Bible that my mom gave me. And I was very blessed at the Goodwill. I found this case that, it's, I mean, it's not even a Bible case. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it works perfectly for it. You see, I've got charts at the beginning of my Bible that I printed out that I put on there, too. This is like a chart of 
the preservment of the New Testament, you know, the King James only stuff. And I've got like a dispensation thing over here too, which I wouldn't agree with anymore, but it's still an interesting, helpful chart. Different, uh, the Trinity and attributes of God, some simple stuff. I've got some highlighters over here. Zoom. I don't think I can't zoom out anymore, but I can pull the camera back. I can pull it up as high as I want, but it might not be easy to read. Well, it's still good. So, um, the words of Job were ended. Like in Job, uh, Since a lot of this is commentary, I think that I kind of went around the places that weren't commentary, or you know, that weren't dialogue. I, don't, I kept saying commentary. I mean dialogue, I guess. I highlighted all the dialogue in the Old Testament. And here, there's so much dialogue in the Book of Job that I instead I just did the commentary parts. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. And it's interesting, in some of these, like, like you saw in Daniel, I highlighted so much because there's so much dialogue. I mean, look at this in Deuteronomy. Dialogue. This whole pages are highlighted. <laughs> Didn't have to do that, but that was just, you know. I started doing the dialogue in Genesis, and then when I got to Exodus, I started doing it, and there's so much of it. And I'm like, oh well, let's just go through with it. Let's just highlight it all. And what did I do when I went through the Bible? I listened to audio Bibles, and it made, helped me get through the Bible really quick. Okay, it's not like a cheating way or anything like that. I went through the Bible, and I read the Bible. You know, I read through it with my mom, and uh, I read through the New Testaments, you know, so many times, just through the different epistles and stuff. I really need to read the Gospels more, but I spend a lot of time in the epistles, and I think that a lot of people do. You know, here I highlighted some bad things, malice, guile, hypocrisies, envies. Or whenever they made like a list of something, I think that's what I highlighted. Murder, a thief, evildoer, busybody. This is prayer again. And that's cool that when stuff is highlighted like this, and I know, you know, I can just open to a page and I just go bam. Like there's, you know, there's a commandment. You know, there's prayer, whatever. Know, this is something with dispensationalism with futurism. This has to do with the Antichrist. So, some of the stuff that has to do with Satan or the Antichrist, I boxed in in a certain, uh, you know, and then people would say that this is like a rapture passage or something like that. Revelation. The Revelation has all kinds of. I got the different, you know, the vials, the first, the second, the third, these are all boxed separately, divided up. So that's that, I mean, it's going through my Bible a little bit, and I've got a lot of bookmarks in the back that I've, uh, the Bible came with a map, which is cool, it came with some pictures in it too that I cut out, but I've got some more dispensational charts and stuff, I've got like a numerology thing back here. And then I've got a lot of different bookmarks and stuff that I've gotten from ministries that I've sent, or I use them as bookmarks anyways. I think this is from David Jeremiah. I've got different notes, 10 steps to happier man family, and all this, just little leaflets. This was a tract of a church that I used to go to, Victory Baptist, How to Know You Are Going to Heaven. Let's look at this. The Bible tells us how to have eternal life and be 100% sure of going to heaven when we die. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to provide eternal life freely to all whom would believe in Him. Here is how to believe in Jesus and have eternal life. First, you must realize you are a sinner. No one is perfect. Romans 3.10 and 3.23, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
So first you must realize that you're a sinner, no one is perfect. I think this was kind of your straightforward, regular Bible track. Second, as a sinner you must realize the payment for your sins. This looks like the Romans road almost, but... Romans 5.12, Wherefore is meant by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Someone must die to pay the debt for sin. If we were to pay what we owe as sinners, when we die, we would spend eternity in hell. The lake of fire. Revelation 20.14, so it goes out of Romans. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Jesus paid the debt for the second death through his death on the cross, and he rose again from the dead to give us eternal life. First Peter 3.18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the unjust for the just, the, or the, suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to, 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 put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Third, you must believe Jesus' death on the cross was in your place to pay for your sin payment. See, I'm, I'm trying to wonder while I'm reading this if, like, the uh, penal substitutionary atonement is being preached in here, or if it can be kind of like, eh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, because I don't agree that Jesus... Um, you know, took on our sins, or how do we say it, that Jesus was, you know, punished for our sins, um, you know, in the sense that, uh, you know, it's hard to, I think, how penal substitutionary atonement really teaches it, is that, you know, like, Jesus was, like, penalized for our sins, like, he died in our place, um, I don't know. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's like that Jesus was punished for our sins. Yet I'm not sure that this is necessarily saying that, even though I'm sure that they would believe in the eternal, in the penal substitutionary atonement. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Fourth, you must believe that Jesus, believe what Jesus did for you on the cross by faith alone to have eternal life. Ephesians, for by grace you are saved through faith, and not, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What it means to believe in Jesus. To believe in Jesus by faith is to trust that he died in your place. To pay your sin debt. I mean, yeah, I mean, that kind of is penal substitutionary atonement, but I don't know. That is to rely completely on Jesus' death, burial, resurrected life from the dead. The de third day was as the only payment for sin to have eternal life. John 5.24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but it, but is passed from death unto life. Our choice now determines where we will spend eternity in heaven forever or in hell forever. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. This is John 3.36. And he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Doesn't it make sense to believe on Jesus Christ, the one who came back from the dead, and trust him for the payment of your sins? Why not trust Jesus, why not trust Jesus' finished work on the cross now and be one of the whosoever believes in Jesus for the payment of your sins to have eternal life. That seems like it's refuting Calvinism, which is good. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Take a moment to say to God in prayer, God, I know I have sinned. I believe Jesus died in my place for my sins. I have never trusted what you did on the cross to s or, yeah, I've never trusted what you did on the cross to save me today, I'm trusting you alone to be my Savior and to be the only way to heaven. Acts 16, 30 and 31, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. God's word says you can know you have eternal life when you put your trust alone in Jesus Christ. 
1 John 5.13, These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Victory Baptist Church, Combe, Illinois, Pastor Jim Eddy. Okay. And, you know, they did use the KJV. That was one good thing about them. I wonder if they, they must have made these themselves, I guess. It's not a bad gospel track. So, there's just a lot of little stuff that I've gathered here. I'm probably just wasting anybody's time who's watching this. And, you know, there's other stuff in here. That's stuff. And I'm just, I'm hoping that even the sound is right. You know, there's so many things that you got to get figured out. The lighting and the sound. And, like, for some reason the sound might not sound right. It's too loud or it's too quiet or there's some buzzing noise going on or this or that. And you got to figure everything out. Is it something on the computer that you can mess with? You know, like, the, the settings or is it, like, the chords or this or that or the other? Oh, it's never-ending. I've got a lot of other little pamphlets and stuff that I've gathered over the years and magazines that I've wanted to go over. That would be great for this, uh, using, you know, the camera like this. I think this has probably gone on long enough, so I'm just showing some different stuff that I can do, having some fun with this, and, you know, hopefully this year there will be a lot of great uses of this. So thanks for all your support, guys, and all your prayers and everything. God bless.